Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. The holidays are behind us and Santa may have brought your children lots of new gadgets and devices. But tech gear can also bring some dangers parents need to be aware of, i.e. me. So we have you covered with digital safety tips for your entire family with our favorite tech expert, Tatanya Jordan. Thank you and welcome back to the show. It is so good to be here. Happy yes, New Year. Happy New Year to you. And yes, I am the little girl we saw in the uh, teaser, Carter. We decided to get her an iPod Touch, okay. which means she can now text and then she can FaceTime Apple people. Uh, so, But we are very concerned to make sure she's safe. So what are we going to kick off with to make sure parents like me feel comfortable with her having a device? Yes, I'm so glad you asked. You're not alone and you are very dialed in parent. She is a very smart little girl. Thank you. So this is a good time to have this conversation okay. around digital safety. So okay. let's first talk about just taking photos. Mm. Um, one really great thing to communicate with your children is that a photo that is taken on a device uh, is alive and forever. It's a digital footprint. And so even if you delete that photo on your camera roll, there's a, there's a trash folder. It's mm. still there. Mm -hmm. And let's say you send it to somebody and they say they're going to delete it. They might not. Right. Let's say you put it on that app called Snapchat that disappears. Well, you can take a screenshot. Yeah. So it's really, really key to know about a digital footprint that anything you capture, say, do, snapshot online will live there forever. Forever. And then now these companies are looking back to, let me see what you did when you were 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't go back that far, but you know, you, you just never know. You never know. You could be in high school and looking for a job and they may search that and find certain pictures. I mean, think about the dumb jokes that you participated in. Yeah. Thankfully they weren't captured online oh in fifth gosh. grade. Yeah. Right? It's a real thing. It's a thing. Okay, so what about friend connections and defining what friendship oh. really is? Oh my gosh. You know, in this day and age of of Instagram celebrity, mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to have as many followers as possible. Right. But it's really, really key to make sure you know every single friend that your child is connected with. Um, you know, they might have 2,000, 5,000 friends. They don't know all those people. Yeah. I don't want my child being connected with anybody that I have not met in person. Mm -hmm. Because the danger that comes from that is that your friend accepts a friend request from somebody that is a mutual friend of one of their friends. They might not even know who that is. All of a sudden, you've let a stranger into your life. They can start DMing you. That's direct messaging. And, and they'll ask for your address, send you inappropriate pictures. It's a downward spiral. So my husband is a middle school teacher, and we have a middle schooler. Uh, she's not on social media. Of course, she's been asking Snapchat, Instagram. And, you know, I've talked to other parents. Well, make her, her account private. What are, what are your personal thoughts on when it's time for... Um, uh, social media for children. I, I want your personal opinion. Okay, this is my personal opinion. Social media is not for the weary. If you struggle with mental health issues, if you fall into the comparison trap, if you are a developing teenager in mind and body, it can be a very dangerous landscape. Okay. So tread that area with caution. You, can, you can't take it back. Yeah. You can always get it and embrace it later on, but you can't take it back. Okay, my gosh. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, but the, 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 we have to limit the exposure. Uh, personally identifiable information online. Yes. Talk yes. to us a little bit about that. We call it PII, and it's something I stress with my son all the time. Please don't ever use your real name in your username uh, and, and let people know your real birth date, where you live, where you play sports, what sports you like, what school you go to, because there are real and pervasive online predators that are looking to communicate and come into real life contact with your child. Wow. Don't they get set up profiles. They like, set up profiles. Oh, she goes here. This is what she likes to do. And then we'll try to can do anything. We'll try to go there or... Yeah, and, wow. and, and I really want parents to know, and caregivers and teachers, anyone out there, this isn't just a, a, a clickbaity thing. Mm -hmm. This is a real and present danger, and you've got to coach your kids on how to be safe online. Yes. Speaking of which, I think a lot of parents are guilty of when we're busy. <laughs> Well, just go to your iPad or, you know, go go play on your iPhone or go to your computer. How do we monitor? Because I am very guilty of not being what I need to be in that space for my 13-year-old and now for my 10-year-old. Oh, my gosh. The iPad has been the best babysitter I know, for our so family. I know. so guilty. We're all... We, we all... Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. I, so on that note, because I'm there, I'm not... I'm, I'm, I'm part of the problem. Um, I talk with my son about how screens affect his brain. Instead of just saying, this is bad and you can't have it anymore, I'm like, you know what? This does the same thing to your brain as sugar. It stimulates that part of your brain that, that also is stimulated by addiction. Yes. And so 
is it going to control you or are you going to control it? Mm -hmm. We have got to limit our children's interaction with a screen, not only from the addictive standpoint, but also the blue light. If they've got a screen in their device uh, at night, they're not sleeping. If they're not sleeping, they're not growing oh. and they're not well, helping. You mean a screen in their face at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. My gosh. This is so much. It's so it much. Is. Okay, um, but there's also support groups for for, yes. for people like Tatanya and myself. Yes, because I, we this is a real thing. Because one of my friends said, "I just got my daughter a phone." I was like, "She's gonna change," because my daughter instead of having books, she used to walk around the house and like knock into walls with books in her hand. It's not her phone. Mm. So she's her love for reading has changed. Oh. So that's hard. It is. So we hard. need help, man. I know. I know. Okay. So. <laughs> You're not alone. Help us the time. <laughs> you're not alone. Okay. If you go on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, and I understand if you're not, but if you are, uh, there is a free group called Parenting in the Tech World. And it is over 54,000 parents now, just like us, trying to figure out, when do I give my child a smartphone? Help, my child's been sexting or cyberbullying. What do I do? Uh, you know, do I let my child have Snapchat or not? If so, when? All of these questions, we're doing it together. Because you know what, Rashawn, you and I are the first generation of parents that have ever had to parent in a tech world. Yes. We're figuring out as we go. Right. Man, I'm so glad they didn't have that back in fam view, boy. Woo. I would not be here. <laughs> Praise God, want to do it? All right, thank you so much, Tatanya. We appreciate that. Uh, for more tech ideas, you can follow her at Tatanya Jordan.